Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 22 and today we have transfer deadline day in Club and Country World and also as well a game against Middlesbrough away at the Riverside Stadium as well. We might fit in another game against Romania in the first of our two remaining World Cup qualifiers but I think I might save that for a separate episode as that's going to be quite important as we try and book our place in Rush 2018 with the Scots. But certainly deadline day, certainly Middlesbrough away and uh, yeah, let's get straight down to it. Before we get to the Borough game though, there is a transfer offer to get to. It's for Mark Hurst, one of our goalkeepers. He is 50 overall and 21 years old. More can want him for 25 grand. I mean, honestly, I don't even need the money, but we'll take it anyway. So he's going to go to Morecambe, totally fine with me. And Hursty boy is going. And so that is the end of Mark Hurst. I am going to try and sign at least one player on deadline day or just before it. Not sure who it's going to be though. And as I show you the budget just before we get into the first game against Borough, it is just £2.5 million. So it's highly unlikely we'll be able to sign anyone too good, obviously, with that amount of money. But there are a couple of players on my shortlist that I might try and sign. I guess we'll have to wait and see. And we have yet another transfer over here as well, this time for Alexander Gilchrist. And again, it's Morecambe. It's Morecambe once again. They just bought Hurst. Now they want Gilchrist as well. Uh, 22 years old, 53 overall centre back. They want him for 60 grand, 10 uh, grand under his valuation. That's totally fine with me. He's out of contract in the summer. And uh, Gilchrist and Hurst going to the Northwest. And so that is the end of Gilchrist and Hurst. Then as they've now left the club. And now we're moving into the first and probably only game of the episode as well, away at the Riverside Stadium to take on one of my other career mode sides of Middlesbrough. Now, of course, we faced these guys last year. They knocked out the FA Cup in the quarterfinal stages, so now we're looking for revenge here at the Riverside and trying to get our second win in the first three Premier League games of the season. We embarrassingly lost to Chelsea by three goals nil at home, but we did beat Swansea in so far our only away game, so possibly another win here, and let's have two from two to start off our trips away from home in the Premier League. So, come on to Johnston, a big three points here, and just hopefully, if nothing else, not as bad as a performance in that last game against Chelsea. All right, so we're underway then, away at the Riverside, and I would take a point in this game as well. Obviously, that win against Swansea was magnificent on the opening day, but I did say against Chelsea, it was just one game, and the Chelsea game proved that too after that really bad defeat. So I'll take a point in this one, and hopefully we can get it. Chinstrap does well to read that throw there and win it back for us. Now Tierney inside towards Craig. Holds it up and looks for Chris Kane inside and he finds him too. Kane with a back heel. Oh, what a back heel. Davidson goes for goal and fires it wide of the post. That was a good little build up there. The skip looking at the target. Still deadlocked at 0-0. We have been a stronger side in this first half and Borough really haven't done anything. Now Davidson really got towards Kane. He'll try and find Maka and Stevie Boy should get on to the end of that. No, George Friend just about got there. But Maka wins it back and feeds it through towards Kane who goes for goal. Great save by Brad Guzan. It's all St. Johnston right now as we're piling the pressure on early. It's Murray Davidson looking for Kane and Kane will take it around one, get himself inside the area now dribbles out of it. Takes it around his man again, chips to the far post where Davidson is waiting. No, it's Craig actually. It's Liam Craig. I thought it was Davidson, but it's Craig who's got the goal and St. Johnston lead 10 minutes before the break and we deserve it as well. Liam Craig's first of the year and it's 1-0 to the Scots. We really do deserve this. Great little cross by Chris Kane into the middle and Liam Craig rises highest, puts it past Guzan, who has absolutely no chance. What a header. Right into the top corner and Liam Craig heads us in front into the lead just before the break with 10 minutes to go. A great start in this first half. We played so well. We got a deserved lead too and it's Craig who's got it for us. Well, after the Chelsea game, I was not feeling confident at all. But to be honest, we've started this game off so well and a full value for this lead. It's been a brilliant start for for us and long may it continue as Taylor finds the goal scorer Craig through towards Maka who's really deep right now through the gap towards Murray Davidson the skipper takes it around one has Kane running through it's a great ball Chris Kane is onside and fires it in it's 2 0 St Johnston no the flag is up that always happens Chris Kane I thought fires into a two goal lead but oh he's just offside it's close it's tight but the Lino's called it right and it's still 1 0 one chance possibly for the Borough just before the break in a half with they've done very little as Stuart Downing receives the throw down this right hand side can he cross no he step back heels and finds a Doma can he cross yes he can and there's old man Barry defending well not that much to do in this game they did well there and going into the break we still lead by one it's been Olsen Johnston what a half 
Chance here for the Borough as Stuart Downing receives the ball, takes it round one and still Downing on the ball, feeds it inside towards Jordan Rhodes and Logan Reed makes an incredible save, turns it onto the woodwork. What a stop by our number 13 as I thought Borough were going to equalise. Incredible save by the 17 year old. There's a dome up for Borough going down this right hand side, plays it inside towards Jordan Rhodes, good little one two there and across the middle and Barry's got to deal with it and he does. Old oh, man Barry alert as ever but the ball comes back into the box, fishing out on the ball, can he get a shot? away. Yes, they can, but Martin Derone skies it over the bar. Young through towards Davidson, finds his man Alston here, and Alston off the bench will chip it through the gap towards Stevie. Can he control? Yes, he can. Great show of strength there, and gets a shot away. Oh, that would have been an extraordinary goal. Macca inside towards Wallspoon, the chance here on the break to possibly wrap the points up here. The homesick Derone can't keep up with Wallspoon down the left-hand side, takes it round the Dutch midfielder, crosses the centre, and there is Stewart getting it off. Oh. That was supposed to be a shot, come on. I mean, I know your stats are so low, but seriously, the vision stat shouldn't be minus 20. That was terrible. But there's old man Barry winning it back for us. Now Stewart on the ball, has a man out wide in Alston. No, it's Davidson, sorry. Back inside if you can, Murray, still on the ball. Trying to take it around Clayton and get inside. Can't do so, really. Still got the ball, that's the best thing. Davidson inside towards Patterson. Maybe a chance here, and it's over the bar from the right back. And that will be that. So final score at Riverside Stadium, Middlesbrough nil, St. Johnston won. And it's two from two on our travels. Another win for us, another three points. What a start to the boys from Perth. Six points out of a possible nine already. It's been brilliant. And just like the Swansea game, we turned up away from home, put the pressure on the hosts and made our presence known. A thoroughly deserving win and a great three points. And we also managed to get our first clean sheet of the Premier League season as well. So because of that, man the match to old man Barry. A really good performance and a great display at the back as part of our defensive line. We keep the clean sheet, we get the three points. What a start for the boys from McDermott Park. So moving on then from that fantastic win, now we're going to look at trying to sign some new players for St. Johnston. I did say at the start of the episode there were a couple of players on my shortlist that I'm looking at. One of those guys is Oliver Burke, the youngster that currently plays for Nottingham Forest in the game, but of course in real life now plays for Red Bull Leipzig. Uh, this guy is really, really quick and he's definitely someone I'd like to sign. He's one of the few Scottish players that has some pretty decent potential. 71 overall, 20 years old. So going to put an evaluation bid of £2.7 million. Oh no, he can't afford that. Oh, well, we might be able to if we adjust the budget. So £2.7 million and we shall wait and see what Nottingham Forest say. And I'm also going to put in a bid for Tony Watt as well, the Cholton striker, 23 years old, also valued at £2.7 million, of course, formerly a Celtic. This is the guy that scored that famous goal uh, against Barcelona a few years ago now at Celtic Park. Uh, we don't have a full scout report on the guy yet, but he is valued at the same as Oliver Burke, so I can only imagine they have a very similar overall. We'll put in a valuation bid, see what Cholton say, and I don't see either of these bids coming off, but to be honest, we need them to if we're going to sign anyone else. So fingers crossed, touch wood, let's see if we put off one more sign in. All right, so advancing through the calendar and straight away we see that Charlton have rejected our bid for what? But Nottingham Forest have accepted our valuation bid for Oliver Burke. So that is fantastic news because to be honest, out of the two of them, this is the guy I wanted more. What's pretty decent, to be fair, we could probably do with a new striker to partner Stevie Boy, but I wanted Burke because I do believe he's the most uh, player with the most amount of potential uh, from Scotland or possibly Ryan Gould thinking about it. But anyway, this guy's a really talented youngster and we should offer him a contract. So that's fantastic. A valuation bid getting accepted straight away. I always say put in those valuation bids because you just never know. And Burke may be coming in for £2.7 million. And one more advance. And also Oliver Burke, he sets his contract as well. So fantastic news. Oliver Burke is going to come in then on a five-year deal on 15 grand a week, £2.7 million. The record signing, club record signing at St. Johnston. But we shall take it. He's 20 years old, 71 overall. And this is a great signing for us. And I'm delighted to have pulled it off. And as you take a look at his full range of stats as well, his valuation has just shot up by 300 grand, which is really cool too. 71 overall, 20 years old. And again, looks like a really great player. The reason I've signed him is just like with Patterson, physically, he's absolutely fantastic. He's just 20 years old. He's got freestyle skills and a freestyle weak foot two. High medium work rate, six foot two. Yeah, that's a great sign in there. And I'm very happy with that one. And so we are now moving into transfer deadline day. But I don't predict us doing anything. We've already wrapped up one of the signings I wanted and we don't have any money left over. So let's just 
just advance through it, and uh, maybe something will happen, but I highly doubt it. Although, having said that, we do have a bid here for Steven Anderson, 31-year-old centre-back, 68 overall. Birmingham want to take him to St Andrews for £450,000. This guy is out of contract in the summer, but he is a really good player, 68 overall. I don't think he's going to get a new deal, though, so I'm tempted to accept this deal and just let him go, because our wage budget shoots up by 17 grand. He can't be on 17 grand a week, surely not, but I'm tempted to accept it anyway and just put my faith in the younger players here and the younger defenders. So I think I'm going to let Anderson go to St Andrews, even though he's all right. So he's going to go. And uh, again, a risky sale, that one, but I'm okay with it. I mean, I say a risky sale. It's not really a risky sale, but he's gone anyway for £450,000. We'll see 300000 of that. And there is actually one player who's on my shortlist right now that was in the free agents list. One of the few Scottish free agents that's a new gen slash regen. Greg Quinn, who is eight ratings lower, but 19 years old. I highly doubt this guy's very good. Good, have got much potential but as another body a cover player to come in I think I might just sign him and, and see what he's like so we'll give him a contract wait and see if he wants to come in and uh, oh god I just I hate the way this game's set up now. Um, we're going to give him a contract wait and see what he says. And um, yeah, maybe he'll be a decent player with some good potential. You never know, right? And I think this will be him accepting his contract. Yeah, so Greg Quinn is going to join the club then on a free agent. 19 years old, 59 overall. Highly doubtful he's got any potential. Can't really check yet until he hits 60 overall. But you never know. So we'll take Quinn in. I think he was just 5 foot 11, which is, of course, like one inch shorter than what I normally like to have. And my centre back, 6 foot plus. But either way, we'll take Quinny and uh, hopefully. Hopefully you'll be okay. You never know, right? So Quinn comes in on the free and we'll take it. Although medium low work rates on a centre back who's five foot eleven. Not too keen on him, to be honest, and I've just signed him. All right, so that is that then. Transfer deadline day is now ending, and I've got to be honest, I'm pretty happy with our signings. That centre-back probably won't do much for us at all, probably won't even play, but when you think about it, we signed Oliver Burke for his valuation, £2.7 million. Callum Patterson's come in and looked really good in the right-back role for just a couple hundred grand over his valuation. £4.3 million spent, £1 million raised for some fringe players too. I've got to say I'm pretty happy with the business in the summer transfer window. So St. Johnston two wins from their first three, a couple of new good signings as well. Things are looking pretty bright here at McDermott Park. I'm liking it. Although, having just said that, there is a training injury, and I'm very, very worried this might be for Maka. It's Murray Davidson, and it's a two-month injury. Why does something bad happen? Always, straight after, I've said something good about the future or the present with my club. It's so frustrating. Murray Davidson, the skipper, is out for two months, and we need a new captain during this time. That is just typical. Cool. Thanks a lot, EA. Just one of those things, though. Can't be helped. And uh, we've got a monthly scouting update here from Jack as well. That is so frustrating. So Malcolm Anderson looks pretty good then. 47.59 overall, 75.94 potential. We've got some good goalkeepers in our club already at the moment. So we might leave him where he is. Uh, Gordon Morrison, not too bad. And six foot six as well. Might sign this guy to our academy. May as well. May as well sign the other guy too. Malcolm Anderson, why not? Uh, Oliver Murray, not looking too good to let this guy go. Uh, John Strachan, possibly descendant of Gordon Strachan. He can go. Not really interested. Although, actually, we'll leave him for one month. Oh, did I just sign him? Did I just sign him? We'll see Daisy. Uh, Oliver Hamilton. Another Hamilton coming through. Possibly could look quite good. We'll leave him in the, uh, the scouting for the time being. Douglas Nicholson can go. And uh, another Strachan. He's not too good either. So, I think I just signed one of the players by accident. But uh, never mind. So, you just come up for your report then. Let's take a look at the players as well. Uh, John Strachan. That was the guy we signed. He's not that great, is he? But we'll leave him there for the time being. Rob Ross. Still looking pretty decent. 62 overall. 69 to 89 potential. Uh, I did see a comment uh, a couple of episodes ago when I signed this guy from someone saying you should call him the artist. I like that. And we'll just keep that secret between you and I. So Rob Ross will come in uh, to our side when he's 16. Looks pretty decent. Ewan Gray not looking the best. Uh, Gordon Morrison, that's the guy we signed by accident. Not that great. Douglas McKenzie, meh. Alistair Gray, pretty decent. And uh, Malcolm Anderson too. So the academy's looking quite good now, I must say. Looking much better than before anyway. And we're starting to get some pretty decent players. And so to end the episode off as well, we do have a squad report right here so you can see how the players are currently getting on and how the team is looking before for the January transfer window in a few months time. Barry and John Sutar now 70 overall each. I absolutely love that. Those two are so good at the back together. A great CB partnership. You can see how the squad's currently looking. The squad is taking a really good shape
shape right now. You know, I'm really liking it. There are still some players you want to ship on, get rid of some of the Deadwood here still, some players that are aging, want to replace them and find younger players as replacements. But for the most part, the team is looking much better and much younger than before. It's looking so much more fun. And Ewan McDonald too has just hit 60 and does show great potential as well. How about that? A great way to end today's episode off. Another Academy player that has a showing great potential tag. That's fantastic. The 17-year-old Cam there looks pretty decent and his brother not quite so much. But either way, the team's looking much better now. I'm really liking this team. It's becoming a lot more fun and really enjoyable. And so that will end today's episode of Club and Country as well, guys. So a massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Club and Country, then please do leave a like as likes are, of course, very much appreciated and really help the channel grow as well. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country where you'll see the close to the World Cup qualifiers with Scotland. Can we reach Rush 2018? Let's hope so. Come on to Scots and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.